Index has had server-side support for quite a while, so you could easily generate a server-side Express or Nest.js API alongside with your front-end stack, which made up a really, really nice experience because you can easily share kind of in a full-stack fashion things within a monorepo workspace with Index. But what if you just wanted to have a single standalone Node API built and are not necessarily interested in a monorepo after all? So early this year in 15.7, we introduced exactly that for Express, Koa, and Fastify. And we improved it even more just recently to allow you to modularize your Node API servers. So let's have a look. So right now, if you generate a new NX workspace, and let's call this one Fastify Modular, you can pass the preset Node server, which will let you choose between those three frameworks for building Node server applications. And there are more already in the works as we speak, such as Nest.js. Now for this one, let's choose Fastify. Right in the beginning here, we can also immediately opt in for getting a Docker file set up for us, which will make the whole deployment experience much better. Now, if you didn't do that, we can always generate that later on as we need it. And obviously we also want to opt into the NX Cloud Caching. So let's open up Visual Studio Code to explore what we got here. The setup in general is very simple and similar to what you would expect from some other sort of CLI. So we have the source folder at the very root, which has our Fastify application because that's basically what we opted for when we set up this workspace. It also generates a set of similar files than the Fastify CLI does. So we have here the plugins folder, which registers some Fastify plugin here that might be useful for other applications as well. Then we have the route folder, which has just a sample route here generated at the very top level, which just responds with a simple API, like a message here and some strings. And everything is kind of wired together in that app.ts file at the root level where Fastify registers those plugins and routes folders. So from this point of view, it's very straightforward. Uh, further down here at the root level, you also see a couple of NX specific files. So this is the NX JSON, which is mostly a file as providing metadata to NX itself to optimize things. So here we have the cache of operations. We also have things like dependencies among the various tasks. So for instance, having dependencies between the builds so whenever you run one build, it would first build its dependent projects and so on. So a couple of different kind of configurations for NX itself. So how can we run this application, uh, this Fastify app with NX? Well, in the package JSON, we have the user scripts that we can use. So there's a start, build and test script. And as you can see, these just refer to an actual NX installation locally here in the node models folder and then invoke the actual target on top of that. So we have here NX serve, NX build, NX test, and these targets are defined in that project JSON, which is specific for an NX setup. Now, such a project JSON has targets which are kind of advanced NPM scripts. So basically here we can run that build, which will run a function, which takes a bunch of different options for configuring how that function actually, in this case, builds the project. And you can see here the package, the node package where this function lives and how the function itself is called. And this is what is named an executor. And we have here a build, we have a serve for running the application, we have linting testing, and we also have a Docker build here for deployment, which because we opted in to get a Docker file generated initially during the project setup. So let's actually run this. So I can just go ahead as mentioned and say NX serve and running this would then serve the module, the Fastify application here at localhost 3000. And if I go there, it's already serving up here, the main API entry point. So one of the particularities of an X is that it promotes a modular setup of your application. So rather than having a monolithic code structure, you should modularize your application because then it's easier to maintain and grow and scale as more team members join it, but also as you have to run those things on CI, for instance. Then this very much goes in line with Fastify, which has these so-called Fastify plugins. So every Fastify plugin exposes a function, which then has different routings defined with, for that specific area, for instance. Now we could define all those different areas just as routes or folders within such an application folder here, or as an X promotes it, split it up into smaller, more fine-grained libraries. Now, call them libraries, call them modules, it doesn't really matter. And so here, for instance, I could go ahead and just call it modules, right? So let me create a modules 
folder here at the very root of our application setup. And then into this one, we want to create a new Fastify library, a Fastify area that, for instance, covers our, let's say, contacts domain area of our application. Now, in the next, you have generators at disposal. So those plugins that we have seen before that run the application and are installed here in the package JSON. For instance, here we have Narwhal Node, which is the main one responsible for building node backends. They expose not just functions to building your project or serving it, but also for generating and scaffolding new things. And so here, for instance, I can go ahead and run such a generator by using NX G or generate. So G is just a short form of it. Specifying the actual package, which is Narwhal Node, and then the name of the generator, which in this case is lib. And now I can go ahead and say, let's say I want to have a contact slip and I want to have it in directory modules because that's where I want to have it placed. You can also add such a dry run and the dry run would just simulate what would be created without actually touching your file system. So this is very ideal for exploring stuff because here we can see it would create such files in that modules folder into a contact subfolder because that's of that area which we just generated, so for the library. And then it creates a bunch of different files for that. It also updates some global files for linting, for instance, and a TS config. And we'll see in a minute why that happens. So if you're good with that, we can just remove the dry run. And this would now actually update our folders and files here. So we now have the modules contacts fo folder here, which is our library. It has an entry point here where it exports everything that is public outside. And at the same time, it can encapsulate everything else within that library. So if you have utilities that just apply to contacts, they would live inside here. And just for instance, the Fastify plugin definition, you expose it to the outside. And so this provides a very interesting way for encapsulating things and keeping things more maintainable. It also has a bunch of configuration files here for setting up TypeScript and making sure that works nicely with all the code editors that are around. But at the same time, it also defines here single and targets again, for instance, for just running the linting of this project. And so we could just go ahead here, for instance, and just run npx nx lint, and then the name of the new library, which is defined usually by the name of the folder and the name of the library we generated. And you can also see it here in a project JSON. So it would be npx nx lint modules contacts. And this would now run linting for just that single project. And this is very useful, first of all, for just running things on a smaller scale, so it is faster. At the same time, if I'm just working on the Connex API as a developer, I'm not really caring about all the other things necessarily that are outside of that scope. And interestingly, also, all the features of regarding speed that NX usually applies at a monorepo scale are available here as well. Because, for instance, I can rerun the same linting command and this would get cached. So it wouldn't rerun the computation because we didn't change any crucial files here, but it would just pull it out of the cache and not run the operation. And as you can imagine, this is obviously way faster than actually computing stuff. So once we have that module defined, we can now actually go and implement it, right? So let me just use that modules context TS file that got generated, which here is just a simple function. And let me create here such a Fastify plugin setup. So here I just export a function that's called contacts that is such an implementation of such a Fastify plugin, which is an async function that takes a Fastify object, potentially some options that we can pass in, and then it defines the routing for that functionality inside. And so again, you here you can see that modularity aspect because we can inside that function define all the different routes that make sense for just that contacts module. And then we expose it such that like the upper level application can go and register them. And so since this file is already being exported here over that index.ts file, as I've seen before, we can now go and import it in the application. Now, if we scroll a bit down, Another thing that, you, that is worth mentioning is that we also updated the TS config JSON during generating that library. And what that did is it created such a TypeScript path mapping here that points to that modules contacts folder or application or, or library that we generated. And so it just points to that index.ts file. And the nice thing now is that I can leverage this alias rather than actually navigating relative to that location of that file. And so going back to our Fastify application, I can go at the very top here and import 
that new Fastify plugin that I created. So again, I'm using here that alias, so it is nicely also defined here. And, and then I can just pull in that context function, which is nothing else than this function that we exposed before inside that modules context library. And you can also see it's very easy to navigate to that, right? I just navigated to the definition and landed in that function. So also from a developer ergonomics point of view, it's very nice. And then I can go to the end here and register that. So I could go and say fastify register, and I want to register that context here, which is the actual function that I just imported. And I provide here a prefix that I want to use when registering it to the application. So meaning that my context API routes inside here would be exposed below that top level entry point. So to demonstrate that, I can just run NX serve again to serve my Fastif application. And now if I go to localhost 3000, again, the top level API is still there, but now I can also go to that context API and it would now also render that context API here. And similarly, we can then continue creating new areas here. Usually those reflect business domains. They could even be nested such that you have like something like CRM and then below that contacts and people and whatnot. And you can keep modularizing. If you don't remember all those commands for generating, there's also a nice thing that is NX console. So you can install that and this will help you discover some of those generators. For instance, if we went ahead and created a new one inside that modules folder here, I could just run NX generate here as a right click on the folder. Say I want to generate a library, in this case, a node library. And now I get the same generator, but I can go ahead and just basically compile the necessary things that are needed. So I can say, I want to name this products. I could potentially go ahead and customize whether that is a buildable library whether I want to use SWC or TypeScript as a compiler, if that is needed. And below here, you can also see the dry run of the output. So it would basically simulate what would be generated. And if I'm good with it, I can just click run. And now we would create here such a second entry point, which is again, has the same similar structure, same setup. And I could go ahead and also here, create a new Fastify plugin. So let me just paste in some new plugin here as well. And let me adjust here the actual message, which now says products API. And again, since this is already exported and has now the TypeScript path mapping defined by the generator that set up this library, I can do the exact same thing as I did here. So now I would have a products as well. And I could go here and import the products API. Now probably due to the copy and pasting, we did not rename also the function name. So let me adjust that. So this will be products. And so I can go here and say, products is the one that's being exported. And similarly, I register that one as well here. Product and obviously the prefix here would be products. And so now in the same fashion, I can go ahead and just serve it. And now not just have the contacts, but also have the products API exposed. As a bonus point on top of this, NX also builds up a graph behind the scenes, which it uses for optimizing, for instance, the building and testing and linting of the various projects. But we can also show this graph by running NX graph. But if I navigate here to that browser endpoint, which bootstraps basically the, the graph here, then I can visualize how my application structure looks like. And again, this is a simple setup here, but you can imagine as my application grows, this could be really valuable. Also because you usually don't just have a top level entry points of maybe the Fastify plugins, but they might depend on more lower level utilities, authentication libraries and stuff like that, which are needed in your project. But what about the building? So we have seen that there is some build target at the very root level here in that project JSON. And so if you go into that project JSON, we see there is a build which runs an ES build process to compile the TypeScript to proper JavaScript that we can then use. And it places it into a dist fastify modular output folder. So we can just invoke that by running NX build. And then after such build is being run, we will see here the dist fastify modular. We see the application in here, as well as all of our modules, obviously, which are needed for running that application. I can literally now just CD into that dist folder, go to fastify modular, and then do node main, which is the entry point, and it would serve up the Fastify application. But this time around, it obviously runs the compiled code and not directly serving it from the TypeScript code. 
So you probably remember previously, we imported not relative the file directly, but rather we used those TypeScript path mapping aliases. Well, those are no more present, obviously, when we run JavaScript. So what Annex did for that purpose is we created that bootstrapping file, that main.js file, which at the very top here creates such a manifest into that file, which has the various pointers to the modules. So there's one entry per module, which first of all lists the actual time to path mapping alias that is being used. Then it has the actual path to the entry point. And there is basically one such entry for each of the modules that we have been using in our application. And then by overriding the module resolve file name, it can properly resolve such an TypeScript path mapping alias to an actual file, and therefore your file application would run as it did before. Now, in this case, basically, you would then just take that output folder and deploy it wherever you want. But we have also seen that we had Docker support. Now, we have already opted in for Docker initially, so that's why we already see such a Docker file being generated here. And the Docker file is actually pretty straightforward. It uses here the LTS Alpine image, it exports the ports that might be needed for running application defines the working the resist slash app, defines a couple of user groups, security groups for the Docker image, and then just copies over the files into the Docker image, and then runs actual NPM installation before obviously then running the node process on top of that. Now to build such a Docker container, you could just manually do it, or you can again use and leverage one of those targets that have already been defined in a product JSON. So if you scroll down here, we see that Docker built, and the Docker build here now has a command basically that just runs whatever you would also use on your command line interface. The only difference is that it also specifies this depends on, which means that whenever you run this Docker build, it would also first run the build step on this project because that's obviously needed as the first step as the output that then creates the files, the JavaScript files, and then those can be packaged into the Docker container. And so to run this, if you have NX console installed, you can see there's this highlighting here directly embedded into this file, which highlights the command that you need to run. So basically just NX run the, the app name and actual target, or we can also just click on top of it. And now it would run the Docker build and package it up for us. And so once this completes, we should have a Docker container being created for us. And uh, we also added a hint into the Docker file for those not knowing how to actually run this. And so basically we can just run Docker run we ex mapped actual exported port and actual name or tag that has been given to that Docker image. And so running this then would spin up the Docker container and export here the application at localhost 3000 again. So if you go there, we should see again our application being served as it did before. Now, if you don't have Docker set up in your case because you didn't opt in for it initially, there's obviously a generator that allows you to generate it just right out of the box. So you can, again, use NX console or if you know the command directly, and then just search Docker. And so there's a setup Docker command directly on the novel node package where you can say, generate me a Docker file for that Fastify modular application, and I would just go ahead and create it. Now, in this case, obviously, it skips it because it is already present in my application. So this should give you a fairly good idea of how you can potentially modularize a Fastify application with those local libraries that NX provides. And the generators there are really to just to help you speed up the process. And so they first of all guarantee the consistency in that all those different libraries now look the same or similar. And there's even more possibilities where you could customize the output and how it got generated you could define rules of which of those libraries can import which other libraries. And so a lot of those facilities are really to improving the maintainability of your applications. So if this was interesting, as usual, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future updates on the Node and other toolings that NX provides. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one.